Say something similar. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> say something similar. <laughs> you can even say the same. Say something similar. Before we came together and found out what is our purpose and um, then going ahead and fulfilling it in the past five years of our lives quite hands-on, we've been dedicating our lives to finding truth inside. Both of us found around our 20s the spiritual path and became busy only and only with finding the truth inside to give ourselves what every soul deserves, which is to dive deep into the truth of our own nature to discover the glorious, magical ways that every human being actually um, yeah, is meant to discover, is meant to live within their lives. Many years we spent on uh, serving the community, doing a, a lot of uh, voluntary work, um, retreats, long stretches of just keeping silence, meditating and going inside. We were doing many, many hours of spiritual practice and uh, personally even years of silent retreats. There was a long period of renouncing the outer world and going full power inside. Many hours of meditation, of introspection, of studying, a very deep community life, spiritual community life, working intensely on this inner transformation, on the inner world, taking the defects and the weak spots inside and facing them and it was a difficult or it is still a difficult process and alchemizing and clarifying and somehow dying to some things and being reborn again. We would basically dedicate every minute of our lives to discover who is really alive inside of us, who is it that we truly are in the depth of our heart. From that quite intense training and community life and entire shift into a spiritual lifestyle, we gradually discovered what is actually our way of expressing ourselves creatively in this world. I started teaching already quite early on and established a quite full life in my community in Berlin where I was quite uh, celebrated and everybody was very proud of what I'm doing and so forth. But I knew within my heart that I'm not yet fulfilling what I'm meant to fulfill. Once the two of us met and also gloriously fell in love. Gloriously. <laughs> we found out that actually we share a purpose together. And after many, many years of inner work, I think eight in Blandine's case and 13 or 14 in my case, we decided to go to Thailand and open a school. It came from a certain burning in the heart. We had a very established life where we came from. Everything was great and comfortable and working. Blandine had all her students that loved her and praised her and everything was going very well and everything was easy and comfortable and rewarding and yet we had this longing in the heart to go to the other side of the world, not knowing anyone, not speaking the language, uh, with a tourist visa, not having the currency or knowing what to expect. We threw away everything and followed this profound dream because we felt it's coming from a correct place inside. It was real here in the heart. That image of going to do that, we both identified is true. And we basically came with not much in our pockets, sort of eating very humbly, living very humbly, sleeping on the floor of our yoga hall. Which was not just our yoga hall. Other people would come and wake us up in the morning to teach the yoga class. And things were pretty difficult, but we pulled through because we know this is the right place. This is our heart. This is where our heart is pointing. And we're going to pay the price and we're going to take responsibility for our heart and for our purpose. And we're going to take the struggle and we will succeed somehow. I'm dealing just with a handful of students here and there, being quite frustrated with um, how slow the process was of building a spiritual school here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. We didn't know the language. We, we couldn't read the papers about visas. We couldn't read the papers about how to set up a company. We were just barely managing to get along financially. But we knew in our hearts that it was the right thing to stay. And we knew that we would give it at least a really good shot before we would give up and just return to our cozy, comfy spiritual lives that 
we were leading back in Europe. And it was a disaster. It was really hard. I would put my best clothes, write a lecture, pay money to rent a yoga hall. Nobody would come. Next day, I get dressed again, write a new lecture to energize, go to the yoga hall, and nobody comes. And then a student would come and not come back. And I was like, my God, we left everything. We put all our money in this. We're on the other side of the world, and it's not working. And then there were two students in class, and then three, and then five. And then after a month or two, suddenly 20, and then 40, and then 60. Sometimes 70 people squished into our tiny little yoga hall that they could barely fit. So many motorbikes parked outside, one on top of the other, and people came out of the class super happy. There was light in their eyes. And it was so rewarding to see people come with a closed heart with a contracted inner state and come out relaxed and happy and smiling and connecting. And to see them, our students, week by week, month by month, gathering strength and confidence and purpose and having light in their eyes, this was an amazing process. And within the first three months, we then also discovered a wonderful resort place and started hosting retreats. And gradually, surely, we built quite a wonderful community by now, with many of our first students already teaching their own students and inspiring us with how wonderful they are transforming and growing and keep walking on this wonderful path of self-discovery. Gradually, gradually came this idea and this dream of having a, an ashram where we can host our retreats. Our dream was uh, recently fulfilled and this wonderful ashram where we live and where people can come for very intense and elevated spiritual impulse and very heart warm spiritual life. That dream came true and now we live here and make these videos. So just within a span of uh, five years, we've been witnessing so many accomplishments, so many grandiose successes that happened through us and around us just due to the fact that we stood with our heart, that we remained aligned with what we knew to be true in the depths of our being. Even now that we are living in this, uh, well, it's a bit like a palace-like place, which we would have never dreamt five years ago, not even three years ago, we would have dreamt that this would be the case. Even now, living here, we still feel the same freedom of when we initially came. We had the freedom of having no money, no real place to stay, just sleeping on the floor somewhere. We had the freedom of knowing no one, being no one, having nothing to worry about. And with this alignment with the path of the heart, with the true path of purpose, that spirituality offers, we are now as free as we were then. None of this is considered for us to be ours or to be some sort of thing that will tie us down and that will determine our path from here. But we remain very strongly with this ideal of having our path purely determined by what is alive in our hearts and in our souls. So after this journey, we feel ourselves quite excited and somewhat ready to share this journey with you and hopefully with many people that can be inspired by this miraculous path of Tantra and of spiritual accomplishment, spiritual purpose finding in which you just let go, you dive into your heart and you will find what the universe placed there that is then just unfolding like a seed sprouting from within you. We look forward to see you here in Chiang Mai in our retreat resort.